Okay, this first question, in ANOVA, the mean squared error MSE measures the Vincent group variability. True or false, if the homogeneity of the variance assumption is valid, then MSE is also an unbiased estimate of the variance. So, MSE, ANOVA assumes that homogeneity of variance. So it assumes um, homogeneity. The MSE is measured by SSE, the sum of squared errors divided by degrees of freedom. And the, when the homogeneity variance holds true, when this part holds true, that means SSE is unbiased. So this means unbiased. Oh, my bad. I'll just rewrite it. Unbiased divided by some kind of constant. This will give you unbiased estimator. So this question is true. Okay, this question, a least squared uh, regression is conducted and the estimated a slope of the mean response denoted as beta 1 is found to have a value close to 0 in magnitude. It follows that the sample Pearson correlation must also be close to 0 in magnitude, true or false. So the Pearson uh, correlation tends to, be, uh, tends to be close to 0, but it doesn't have to be a must. It's not, it doesn't have to be must. The Pearson measures the strengths and direction of the linear relationship. So st strengths of the linear relationship between the two variables while the slope of the regression. So the slope of the regression beta 1 uh, measures the difference between or the change in independent over the dependent variable. So this is not true. This is false. Okay, this question. Bon, both Bonferroni and Tukey's method are statistical technologies, uh, oh, not technology, techniques used to control the family wise error rate, FWER, in multiple comparison procedures. Uh, Tukey's method is generally less conservative than Bonferroni's method in controlling the FE, FWER. So, the Tukey and Bonferroni both uses, um, both used to control the FWER. But Bonferroni is the general test of possible con uh, contrast, which is saying that Bonferroni divides the significance significance level by the number of comparison. This will give you a um, large number of comparison and adjusted alpha. Oh, just did alpha. I'll just write it like that. And then Tukey. So Tukey's method does not adjust the significance level for each um, individual comparison. Since it does not adjust the significance level, this is considered to be more, um, I guess, less conservative than the Bonferroni's which is why this is considered as true for this question. Okay, this question 1.4. Suppose that you're analyzing a data set that represents the annual population growth of a city over the past 50 years. The y is equal to 250,000 plus 5,000 x year. In this equation, x year denotes the number of years since 1970, with x year equals zero for the 1970. Okay, given that the all assumption of the linear regression model are valid, the coefficient of determination r squared is equal to 0 0.99. We can safely use the linear regression model to accurately pre predict the city's population for the year 2030 to uh, be 550,000. So this is actually surprisingly false because even with the high r squared, r squared doesn't tell you anything. That's one thing that you should probably remember. Even with a high r squared, it's not safe to use the linear regression model to predict the city's population for the year 2050. Because high r square tells you that the model um, fits with the existing data. But there can be some like unforeseen factors that uh, account for the model. So, so you cannot safely just use uh, linear regression because of the high r square value. So this is false. Okay, this question, 1.5, a regression analysis between weight and the height resulted in the following least squared regression line. 
In this context, the estimated value of the slope B1 equals 0.5 indicates that if the height is incre increased by 1 cm, the weight will exactly increase by 0.4 kg. This is actually false. If the height increases by 1 cm, the weight is estimated to increase by uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, sorry. It does not, it's not exactly increasing, it's estimated. So this is false. Okay, so 1.6, uh, consider a random variable x that follows a f distribution with numerator and denominator degrees of freedom equal to 5 and 15, respectively. In this context, it is theoretically possible for the random variable x to take negative values. This is false, because f distribution, since it has f distribution, it's kind of covered, but f distribution, there we go. f distribution is always non-negative because of the uh, chi-square distribution. And the chi-square distribution is always non-negative. So that means the random variable x cannot have a negative value, so that means it's false. Okay, this question asks, um, all necessary ANOVA assumptions have been met, and the ANOVA procedure has resulted in statistical significance. How many total pair of ways comparison should the researcher conduct as a follow-up? Okay, the total um, pair, um, pair-wise sorry, comparison has a formula for that. So it's k times k minus 1 over 2, which k is the number of population. So since our given the population uh, cap population um mean uh, to convert the population means of yeah it is number of population right so k is number of population and then since k is equal to four four times three over two which is six so the answer for this question is us uh, c. Okay, this question two point two uh researcher regression analysis blah 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 blah. And then during the analysis, the researcher discovers that there is a positive or, or association between these two variables, and all the data points to lie on the regression line. Okay, so th the key point is it is a positive association. So positive association means that the beta 1 is not equal to 0, right? So if you write the uh, linear regression, this is y equals beta 0 plus beta 1x, and then if it's positive relationship, beta 1 cannot be 0. Right, but then in the C, beta one is saying it's equal to zero. This cannot be true for sure. So, since uh, that is the case, C is the wrong answer. Okay, this question two point three: a large value of the coefficient of determination in a least squares of regression analysis indicates. So this means that R square value is big. So what does it tell you? R square uh, is big, then it means the data fits with the um, existing data. I mean, not the data, model fits. Model fits with the existing data. So if you look at the options, the majority of the variation in the response has been explained by the regression analysis. That's right. So the total variance is equal to the no. The model display is smaller. We don't know. We can put it accurate now. So one thing to note is that the high R square just only tells you that it is explained by the regression line. You cannot analyze anything furthermore. That's one thing that's gonna come out in the exam. That's yeah, that's the most important thing. So the answer is D. Okay, three. A college a dietitian has developed three diet plans. Diet one, two, three. To assist college students in losing weight, the weight of participants who followed this uh, diet programs were was measured in pounds both before starting the diet and after blah blah blah. So that is the summary graph. And I check the assumption of constant variance. Okay, so the constant variance, in order to check that, you can divide the uh, variance, so like the standard deviation value, the like x max over x mean. So if you divide the value and then check whether that value is less than the critical value for for the uh, chi-squared. So x max value is 1.21 in the given area, and the x mean value is 0 0.8. So this value is about 1.5125 if you punch it in the calculator, 
and this value is less than 2, which is the degrees of freedom um, and the critical value from the chi-square. So since this is less than 2, you can say that um, since the ratio of the uh, larger series, the minimum variance is smaller than 2, then 2 the assumption is met. And we can proceed. Okay, so degrees of freedom, um, complete the ANOVA table below, and we have to find all of this. So the degrees of freedom is k minus 1, which is the group number minus 1. So we are given that group number is 3, so 3 minus 1 is 2, so the answer for this part is 2. So degrees of freedom error, that is um, m minus k. n is the number of total, um, total observation. And we have n 10, 10, 10, so that means 10 times 3 minus the number of group, which is 3, so 27. So that's 27. And total, what do you think total is? Um, so the number of um, factor plus error, so it's 29. You can do that. Or if you want to do, M, you can solve it, like, I guess, with the formulas, if you want to remember the formulas in case, then that, that is m minus 1 which is n is that we found that it's 30 minus 1 is equal to 29, which is indeed 29. Okay, let's look at the sum of squares. So sum of squares factor SSF is um, SST minus SSE, which is sum of squares error. So SST is 42.05 and the SSE is 25.74. If you do the calculation, that comes out to be 16.31. So that's your uh, sum of squares factor. And the mean square factor, what do you think? Mean square. So that means mean sum of squares factor, SSF, divided by the degrees of freedom, divided by the number. So that is 16.31 divided by 2, which turns out to be 8.155 for this. And the mean square error. What do you think? So whenever you see mean, I feel like you have to kind of like divide by the number, number which is given as degrees of freedom in our case. So mean square, so this is SSE divided by the degrees of freedom. So DFE. So SSE is given as 25.74 and then mean square, uh, degrees of freedom error, which is 27. So you divide by the degrees of freedom error, which will give you 0 0.9533. And then F-test statistics. So F-test statistics, FTS, is equal to mean square error factor divided by mean square, uh, mean square factor divided by mean square error. Sorry. Yeah, that is, that is quite important. So if you do that, then it becomes 8.155 divided by 0 0.9533. If you punch it in the calculator, you get something like 8.5545 or something. 8.554. Let's do that. So if you get this value, you're done with this table. And using that, we can answer uh, problem C. What is the estimated value of the uh, assumed common variance among the three diet programs in, in the analysis? That means that we want to find the S squared value, which is equal to MSE which already we, com we computed. So MSE value is 0 0.9533, so you can just write 0 0.9533. That's it. Okay, so uh, problem D, choose the correct p-value associated with the ANOVA table in part B from the options below. Assume that FTS, DF, blah, 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 and then, okay, the code, okay. So since we're given that the ANOVA um, table is based on the part B. So, okay. So, ANOVA table is based on the F test, right? And that means that it's going to be only using the right tailed. Since it is right tailed, a lower tail is not going to be true. That means A, D are not right. So, it's going to be either B or C. But also, since it is right tailed, it can, it's not two tailed. That means there's no two multiplied together. That gives you the option B left. So the answer is B. 
and our p value is 0 0.0013 blah blah blah. Okay, so at the 5% level of significance level, is there evidence that the average weight loss due to at least one diet is different? So p value, you can write that p value is 0 0.0013232766, and that is definitely less than 0 0.05, right? So we have evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And we can say that we have a strong uh, support to the claim that the true average weight lost due to at least one diet uh, one diet oh is different from the other two we can state that since we can reject the null hypothesis so there you go for e Okay, so given the result in part E, will it be meaningful to conduct a pairwise comparison or not? And then explain the reason. Okay, so I would say this meaningful because the we uh, we said that in the part E that at least there is one diet, one at least one diet in average, um, I guess weight loss is different from the rest since there is at least yes this is so messy sorry since um there is at least one diet in average weight loss is different from the rest from our conclusion from e we can say that it is still meaningful it would be it would be meaningful to conduct a pairwise comparison by using that reason and moving on to question G, so we have the output and then draw the uh, two ski HSD. Okay, so let's let's see. And the level is at the uh, five percent. That means zero point zero five. So we can compare that which one is I guess um bigger or uh, smaller. So if it's like less than or zero point zero five, we can reject a null. If it's um sorry. If it's greater than 0 0.05, then we cannot reject, right? So if you look at this p-value, this value is bigger than 0 0.05. So that means that you cannot reject the null saying that diet 2 and diet 1 is, um, I guess, diet 2 and diet 1 are the same. So when I'm, whenever I'm saying reject or not reject, the null is saying diet 2, diet x, diet y is equal to zero meaning diet x is equal to diet y i just wrote x and y to indicate this like location of this two one or three one kind of thing because i was kind of lazy to write which ones to write which ones i guess i was kind of lazy to write either two one or three one or three two so there you go so since 0 0.47 is uh, bigger than 0 .0, 0 0.05 you cannot reject so that means that's a no. And then there's three and one. Let's see. The uh, p value is 0 0.02. That means it is smaller than 0 0.05. So you can reject. Cool. So they are different. Different. And then there's three and two. If you look at the p value, 0 0.001. That is way less than um, 0 0.05. That, that means you can reject. That also means it is different. Then using that, you can write the diet number diet two diet one diet three i wrote it like this because i know that i have to draw a line between diet one and two but you can write diet three diet two diet one it doesn't matter you can write any order as long as you can draw the line with diet two and diet one so if you draw it like that it's it's the line between two and one because they are considered to be the same in because of the null hypothesis and also you have to write the mean value so 9.72 10.24 11.48 10 and then uh what what else do we need to do and then write one or two sentences complete and then write which diet program is the best okay i would say the diet three is the best and the reason is because diet three is 
different from both 1 and 2 because we conclude that dias 3 and dias 1 are different, dias 3 and 2 are different, so they are different from both 1 and 2. And also, it has a larger reduction in weight loss with 11.48, which is bigger than 9.72 or 10.24 which is why IS3 is bigger. So that is it for question three. Okay, so this question, uh, scientists is studying the relationship between annual rainfall measured in centimeters and shoreline erosion, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the first question, fit the linear uh, regression in line for, for the association between shoreline erosion and rainfall and interpret the value of B1. Okay, in order to find B1, we have to find the X, S, Y and X, X, X. That's the uh, formula, right? So then to find the S, S, X, uh, yeah, S, S, X, Y, you have to uh, find that you multiply the sum of X, I times X, Y, I minus one over N times uh, sum of X, Y times sum of uh, Y, Y, I and divide it by the N population. And then sum of x i squared minus one over n times x i squared to find the x x right. So if you plug it in, then it's gonna be six hundred twenty six point five minus uh one over let's see n how many n are there um uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten so ten times um, 600 times 26.5 divided by xi squared, which is 43,100 minus 1 over 10 times xi squared, which is 40, no, this is not the right xi, sorry, this is 600 squared, 600 squared. So if you punch it into your calculator, you get 519 over 700, 7100. So that is about to be 0 0.0731. So that's your B1. And then we have to find the intercept point. So we know that Y is equal to B0 plus B1X is the formula, right? So in order to find the B0, then B0 is equal to Y minus B1X bar. So Y value and Y bar, sorry. Yeah. And then Y bar value is, you have to find it. because But we do have the sum of uh, Y y i so sum of y i is 26.5 so uh, y bar is 26.5 divided by the number of population to find the mean value this is 2.65 so 2.65 minus b1 value which is 0 0.0731 times the x bar value we we also know the x i value sum so you can just find the x i value sum divided by the number of population which is 10 so 600 divided by 10 which is uh 60 right so multiply by 60 if you punch into your calculator you get something like negative 1.736 that's your answer yeah i'll just highlight the answers and then write out the equation of the um, regression line so we have everything then we can just write y is equal to negative 1.736 which is a b0 value we're just literally using this equation. Y bar is equal to B0 plus B1 X bar. So Y estimate is equal to negative 1.736, which is B0 value, plus B1, which is 0 0.0731, and then times X rainfall. Okay, part B, complete the ANOVA table. You don't need to show any work. Okay, so model of DF, which is, um, DF is equal to k minus 1 and then let's see um so we have uh two uh groups but which is x and y so that means 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 so that's your model right and then uh, your error is m minus k and then we know that n is 10 so 10 minus 2 which is k is the group and the n is the observation so 10 minus 2 is equal to 8, so that becomes 8 for the error. So then the total will be just 9, 1 plus 8. Okay, cool. And then, let's see, sum of squares model is given, and then sum of squares error is not given. 
that is okay cool um so sse so ss um okay ss um r is 37.938 and then i feel like it's easier to find the sst first to find the sse so let's find the sst the sum of squares the total is equal to us uh, uh, sum of y i squared minus one over n times y i squared, which is y i squared is one hundred eight point six three minus one over ten times um, y i squared, which is twenty six point five squared entire thing. That will give you thirty eight point four zero five. So that is thirty eight point four zero five. So if you want to find the error, sum of squares errors, that that means you can just do SST minus SSR. So 38.405 minus 37.938, then you get something like uh, 0 0.467. Cool. That's, yeah, yeah, that's what we have. And then mean squares. Mean square is basically the sum of squares divided by DF which is 37.938 divided by 1, which is the same thing, 33.938. Cool. And then F value. F value is basically calculated by mean square, uh, M mean square, so mean squares model, which is 37.938 divided by the mean squares error, so, which is 0 0.058. Then you get something like 65, uh, 654.8276. That's how you get the values. Okay, this question is 4C. Is there a significant uh, linear association between rainfall and shore, uh, shoreline erosion at an alpha value at 0 0.01 level of significance? Provide the formal decision and conclusion in context. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we know that our p-value, which is given, is 0 0.0... Oh, zero, less than 0 0.0001. And that is less than or equal to 0 0.01 alpha value, right? So we can say that we have evidence to reject the null since the p-value is smaller than the significance level. Null hypothesis um, H0. And say that the data does give a strong uh, support which p-value is less than 0 0.0001 to the claim that to the claim that um, there is a linear association between rainfall and shoreline erosion cool and then after that, we do have to uh, find the R squared, right? So if you find the R squared, R squared can be found as uh, SSR over SST, which SSR is given, which is 37.938, and SST, we found that 38.405. If you divide this value, and we'll get 0 0.9875. So then you can say that R squared tells us that uh, 98.7, uh, sorry, this is 78. 98.78% of the variation in the shoreline erosion has been explained by the regression line. And yeah, one thing to note is R squared does not tell you anything other than saying that the data is well reflected. So yeah, that's one thing to remember for R squared. And that's common key point for the exam. And next, next question, what, portion, pro, uh, what proportion of the total vari variation of the shoreline erosion is not explained by the rainfall? So since R squared is explained 98.78%, the not explained part of B1 minus R squared. And the and the reason that we are subtracting from 1 is R squared is from 0 to 1. So 1 minus R squared is 1 minus 0 0.9878, which is 0 0.0122. So there, there is one point, um, 
1.22%. That looks like comma. 1.22% of the total variation of the shoreline. Shoreline uh, not explained. Not explained by the linear uh, relationship with rainfall. Okay, uh, part E. Construct a 99% confidence interval of beta 1. So, okay, so it's the significance level. Qt is usually the significance level thing, and then df value, the lower tail. And since our lower tail is all false, that's good. To df of error is 8, right? So that means it's gonna be this one. Oh, that's the only one. Oh, cool. Oh, and this one. And yeah, on the bottom one, right. So these are gonna be the our only options. And this is the DF of error. So uh, yeah, whether it's gonna be divided by two or not. So let's go back to our original question ask. So for each of the 10, uh, ten uh, annual annual rainfall levels, the randomly selected shoreline erosion was, uh, value was measured, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, a scientist is studying the relationship between the rainfall and the shoreline erosion. So, we're interested in the changes. It's not like a one tail, it's a two tailed. Because we're interested in the changes, right? The variation of the shoreline. So, since this is the changes, that me that's going to be two tailed, and that means we're going to be dividing by two because it's two-tailed. So it's going to be this one. So we have that. And using this value, OK, so since this is Qt, that means it's a t value. t alpha over 2, 8, value is 3.355, uh, I'll erase it, 3a7. And the beta one that we found was, where was it? Oh, a long time ago. One. Um, Wait, where are you? 0 0.07131. Yeah. 0 0.0731 and MSE, which is sum of uh, squares mean, no, mean squares uh, error, which is 0 0.058. So the equations, uh, the, if you remember the equation, it's like B1 plus minus uh, T value times the MSE over SS. XX. So that means B1 will be 0 0.0731 plus minus 0, oh, not 0 point, 3 point 3 times square root of 0 0.058 divided by X, S, X, 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 S, X, X, ah. Yeah, there's a lot of X and S. So what is the value anyway? So x x x. Oh, uh, that's we. Oh, yeah. What we found in the a was seven hundred seven thousand one hundred. So you divide it by seventy one hundred. So that will give you the interval. So the interval is from zero point zero six three five to zero point zero eight two seven. If you do the calculation. Okay, this question. Using the same critical value as E, construct a 99% projection interval of shoreline erosion when the amount of rainfall is 100 cm. So we use the linear regression value. So we know that it's negative 1.736 plus 0 0.0731 times x from the above. And then we know the x value is 100. So we just plug it in, negative 1.736. 6 plus 0 0.0731 times 100, you get something like 5.574. Okay, so we have that. And then standard error can be found by square rooting of MSE value times 1 plus 1 over n plus x um, minus um, x bar value squared over x, x, x. So the MSE value, then, which is 0 0.058, times 1 plus 1 over n plus x bar value, which is 100 that we found. 100 minus the x, the x star value is 100 because we are given as 100 centimeter. 
and the x bar value if you recall from the question a i believe that's 60 right so uh, square root of xi divided by n which is 600 over 10 which is 60 so 100 minus 60 squared over x um s s ah x s s s oh my goodness <laughs> S X X, which is seven hundred, seven thousand one hundred. So if you do that, then you get something like zero point two seven eight ish. Okay, I'll just round it as zero point two seven eight, and then using that value, you have to find the interval, which is the y value, plus minus t of t value, and then times the standard error value. So y value which we found to be 5.574 plus minus t value which we found was 3.355387 3.355387 times the se value which is 0 0.278 so if you do that you get something like um 4.64 to 6.51 uh, or something yeah just i rounded a little bit so if you get something like that or somewhere near to it because i know the um how much rounding will change the error so yeah that's that's how it works okay question five list all assumptions which uh should be satisfied to conduct inference in a simple linear regression ana analysis okay so we know that the assumptions are srs simple random um sample i think yeah simple random sample so that's one thing that you have to uh, figure out and the linearity and then homogeneity and the constant variance and normality so srs the, the response the server tra tra uh, traffic is obtained as a simple srs a linearity that the relationship between between uh, server traffic and investment dollars whether that's linear or not and also homogeneity assume that the uh, and the constant variance part and then we have to assume that the residual uh, errors have common variance and normality okay so assume that the rest of your errors are normally distributed let's do your errors are normally uh, distributed okay okay this question uh, B is to evaluate whether each assumption in A is true so let me just copy paste the entire um, A part and then evaluate it there Okay, for SRS, let's see. So if you go back to the question, it says that as, uh, the research team obtained the following set of graphics uh, from their data of 100 pairs collected from SRS. So that shows that it is indeed SRS, so that this is valid because question said so. And then uh, let's look at the linearity. So if you look at the linearity, for the scatter plot and the residual plot, you see that it's like looking like this, like the curvatures, not a straight line. So since there are curvatures, uh, curvatures in both um, uh, scatter plot plus residual plot, this is not linear. It's invalid. Homogeneity, constant variance. Let's look at that. So if you look at the graph in the scatter plot and the residual plot, the 20s, it's kind of like clustered together. And if you look at the 40s and 50s, it's not like clustered, it's more like spread apart. That happens in the residual plot as well. If you look at the 20s, it's like clustered together. And if you look at the 40 to 50, they're like spread, spread way apart. So that shows that it's not constant variance. So this is invalid because of residual and the scatter. Plot. And the normality, let's see. Normal plot, uh, the residuals are, let's see, the residuals, okay. Normality, 
So if you look at the histogram, the it's kind of like the right tail because like the tail is uh, longer in the right side, right? That shows that this is not normal. If it's normal, it should be like uniform looking like this. This tail should be like about the same length. So this is not invalid because of histogram. And also, uh, since it's talking about the normality, we cannot forget about no our normal, normal probabil probability plot of residuals. So if you look at that, this is like um, the point at the end, it looks like it's going up like this. So it's looking like not a straight line, more like concave up shape. So this is concave up. So, histo by, uh, so by the histogram and also normal probability plot, shows that this is not normal, so this is invalid. Okay, and then if you respond to part C, below is the R uh, alpha from running, this is what can you conclude? Well, actually this alpha doesn't really matter to us anymore, because since the our normality assumptions, our four assumptions, not normality assumptions, our assumptions are invalid, are invalid, or strongly violated that we cannot conclude anything other than the relationship then the relationship between server traffic and investment is nonlinear other than that we don't we can say anything about it because if like, it would be a different story if the assumptions are, are met, but in this case, it doesn't meet any of the, I mean, it meets the SRS, I guess, assumption, but other than that, linearity is not met, homogeneity is also not met, normality is also not met, so you can't do anything about it, so our output is meaningless. So that is it for the question, and that is it for the exam as well.